Hey guys, unfortunately Tiger Woods missed the cut at the 2019 British Open and he revealed a lot about the changes that are happening to his body and his time as he's gotten older. And Tiger and I are the same age, we're both 43 and we both have one other thing in common, that is we've both had a lot of spine surgeries. I've had four cervical spine surgeries, in fact I'm fused at C1, 2, and 3. But now why can I go out and hammer 200 yard 7 irons all day, pain free, no effort, not feel fatigue, and Tiger's struggling to make it through 18 holes of golf. It's one reason, and I'm gonna talk about it today, and I'm gonna help you prevent this same back issue so that you can play pain-free, powerful, effortless golf for the rest of your career. So, what's going on with Tiger's swing? Well, first, let me back up just a little bit and talk about how Tiger's changes over time have had a huge impact on what he's doing. Back in 2010, I published a video on YouTube. It's still up there. I'll put a link down in the description if you wanna take a look at it. And I talked about how the changes that he was making with his new instructor that I felt were gonna be detrimental to his swing. Now, unfortunately, I was right. And so now you look at Tiger's game now and he's had all these back problems that he never had before that in his career. And I'm gonna to explain to you why that is today. There's two common reasons. One, I talk about a lot in that video about how the downswing motion that he changed to caused a lot of back issues, created a tremendous amount of shear force and stress on his spine. But today I'm gonna to talk about a backswing motion that's actually causing his lumbar pain and how you, if you have low back pain in your swing, there's several reasons. I'm gonna put one up in the bonus video later at the end of this video and down in the description. But I'm gonna talk about something specific today that many golfers are doing. And in fact, many golfers are being taught this and it's causing tons of back pain and it's totally preventable with one simple change. Now in a moment, I'm gonna put my swing up, up against Tiger's and you're gonna see that they're shockingly similar. The swing that Rotary Swing teaches and the swing that Tiger does for the most part, when we talk about the core body movements are very, very similar, but there's one very subtle, but very, very important difference. And it's the difference between playing pain-free golf and hurt, having back pain every single time you step out on the course. If you don't want back pain, listen up, because I'm gonna make this really simple for you, and you're gonna feel and experience this right now. In fact, I'm gonna show you and help you feel what Tiger's back is feeling like. So, one of the things I talk about a lot with Rotary Swing, we talk about keeping the joints in neutral, especially the spine. We have a full panel of orthopedic and world-leading neurosurgeons on our medical panel have helped us look at the spine and the golf swing, and how do we prevent back pain, how do we protect the body so that it's moving safely and efficiently as best it can in the golf swing? One of the things I've talked about a lot is primary balancing joints, and you've heard me talk about this the most when it comes to setup. Many golfers are taught to set up on the balls of their feet. Now, I've talked about the reasons why you shouldn't do this many times, and I'll put a, a link down into the description for a video that you can reference, I'm not gonna go in full depth about it but I want you to feel this for yourself very quickly. So hop up while you're watching this video and I want you to put all of your weight on the left ball of your foot. 100%, if, assuming you're a right-handed golfer, of course. And I want you to now turn your hip to a full follow-through. And I want you to tell me what you feel as you're doing this. Well, you're gonna feel that there's a lot of weight on the ball of your foot, of course, but you're gonna start to notice that there's strain and tension on your left knee. If I'll do it face on so you can see the same thing. So I'm gonna put all my weight on the ball of my foot. My heel's actually almost slightly up in the air and I'm just turning like I'm trying to get to a full follow through. This is very uncomfortable. If you keep doing this back and forth and then I'm doing it slow, much less doing it at the speed that you do it in a golf swing, it creates a tremendous amount of strain on your knee. In fact, this is one of the reasons, in my opinion, that Tiger had a lot of knee problems earlier in his career is he used to set up on the balls of his feet and then keep his weight on the ball of his foot, you'd actually notice him jump up in the air and pivot his foot like this when he was hammering a driver. While that does give you a lot of vertical ground force, it's also torquing that knee is not necessary. We set you up where your body is designed to bear load, over the center of your ankles, and more importantly at impact, that ankle is driving, all of my force is driving through that foot down into the ground, and that shifts my primary balancing joint from my knee to my hip socket. Guess what your hip's designed to do? Look at all this rotation. External rotation mobility, internal rotation mobility. This is all coming from my hip socket. My knee, I got about a degree and a half of rotation. That's not very much. So when you're on the ball of your foot, your primary balancing joint shifts from your hip socket, where it's designed to pivot, to your knee that's not designed to pivot very much at all. And so that's why you create a tremendous amount of stress on your knee. Now, Tiger's doing the same thing to his low back. 
And especially if you've had low back problems, low back surgeries, the last thing on earth that you'd ever want to do is move in a way that's going to put more stress on that lower, the lumbar area. Now, what is he doing that's causing that? Simple. Just keep standing up. I want you to feel this because you're going to know exactly what Tiger's back feels like in two seconds. So I want you to put your weight 50, 50, maybe hang on the left side just a little bit. This is one of the things that Tiger took from his old instructor that he's kept in his swing that he didn't do earlier in his career when he didn't have back problems. And just now he hangs a little bit more on the left side as he goes back. So I want you to do this. Say, let's, let's say you're going to be 60% on the left side, 40% on the right. And now just turn as far as you can without shifting any weight at all. And tell me what you feel. Well, without moving it, my weight to one hip socket or the other, I'm no longer going to shift on one hip socket that's designed to rotate. I'm taking these out of my swing and I'm essentially making my primary balancing joint, my pelvis and my sacrum, my lumbar area. So if I don't move my weight at all, oh God, it's uncomfortable doing it slow, much less fast. And all of my pain and discomfort and tension is coming to my lumbar. You should feel this as well. If you hang on the left side a little bit more and try and turn, not only will you lose mobility, but you're going to feel a tremendous amount of shear force and discomfort in your lumbar area. Now let's do the opposite what rotary swing teaches. Instead of staying perfectly centered and not letting your hip shift at all, I'm going to let my weight shift to my right hip socket, put my weight on my right uh, hip jock where this is my primary balancing joint. And now, hey, look at that. I don't, in fact, hey, look, there's mountains back there. I have no pain, no discomfort. In fact, now I feel all the load is on my right hip socket. Just by letting my weight transfer to the right, instead of hanging on the left or staying centered, I can make this huge shoulder turn with no problem whatsoever. Weight shift is a fundamental of any hitting or throwing sport. And with rotary swing, we want your weight to shift to the right so that your primary balancing joint moves to your hip socket that's designed to do this internal rotation. If you stay centered and don't let your weight shift at all, you're now taking all of that stress and you're putting it all in your low back. It's not designed to do that. Your lumbar spine has very little rotation most of the rotation in the golf swing is going to happen in your thoracic, your mid and upper back. You need every single joint to be in neutral so these facet joints don't bind against each other because you only have about a degree and a half, degree, degree and a half of rotation on each vertebrae. Now, as soon as you lock your lumbar in place and you no longer, now you're relying on that for some rotation where there's very little movement there and your thoracic without letting your weight shift to the right, all of that load is being transferred straight into your lumbar. If you don't want low back pain, you must let your weight shift. And again, you can feel this for yourself. You're going to take my word for it. A little bit of shift to the right, weights on the right. I feel all the load in my glute. My hip sock is designed to do this all day long. And I feel nothing, nothing in my lumbar spine. That's the difference with rotary swing. We look at the swing from the inside out, literally the inside, the ins not just the inside of, you know, your shoulders versus your arms. We're literally looking at your spine, the joints, the ligaments, the tendons, all of the stuff that's going to make it so that you can swing powerfully, safely, and efficiently is the difference with rotary swing versus anything else. That's why we have a medical panel. That's why we have PhD biomechanists on our medical panel to help us look at the swing to, so that you can swing safely, powerfully, and efficiently. Now, I wanted to put Tiger Swing up next to mine because I'm going to show you how subtle this difference is when you look at how Rotary Swing is teaching you how to rotate the way that your body is designed to do it versus trying to do something that isn't healthy for your spine. All right, so I have taken Tiger Swing here and cut it out so that you can see uh, it next to me in the webinar, I was just demonstrating these moves to Rotary Swing Academy students, how simple the golf swing really is. And when you're learning it from a Rotary Swing Tour perspective, there's only four really key moves that you've got to do that I'm going to walk you through in a second. But first, I want to show you just how subtle and simple having a really bad back and a lot of back pain playing golf is and completely avoiding back pain and make sure that you pay close attention to this and make sure you got up and you felt the little movements that I was talking about just a moment ago, because this is going to be a game changer if you have low back pain. So I'm going to draw a vertical line up from the center of my ankle. That's a reference point that we use for neutral joint alignment. And then I'm going to do the exact same with tigers. What do you notice? Well, very subtly, there's maybe an inch gap, maybe inch and a half, give or take a little bit 
between my butt cheek and this line, the center of my ankle, and Tiger's is actually on it or even slightly in front of it. So maybe there's an inch and a half, two inch gap here. All this means is he's got more weight on the left side. If we had force plates under him, you'd see that it'd be more weight on the left. And of course, this restricts the hip turn. You can see here, you can see a lot more of Tiger's belt buckle. I'm wearing a black belt. It's harder to tell, but you can see more of my, for lack of a better way of putting it, my glute sticking out over here. Whereas Tiger's, you can't see, he's just not turned as much. So this line is all that's showing back pain versus no back pain because all I've done is allow my weight to shift to the right slightly, shift my primary balancing joint to this right hip socket. That allows my hips to rotate a little bit more freely. And now the strain on my lower back is completely gone just by having this very subtle inch and a half difference. Now, some of you are going to say, hey, wait a second. If I shift my hips to the, you know, to the right, aren't I sliding or swaying? No. Does it look like I swayed here or that I slid? No, of course not. In fact, if you want to get really specific about it, let's look at the difference in angles of my right leg, which is if this right leg was vertical, you would see the big hip slide and 81 degrees is the angle of this right leg. Now let's do the same thing with tigers and move this over a little bit. Hey, look at that. They're practically identical. So no, I haven't swayed. I haven't slid. All I've done is allow my pelvis to shift naturally to the right rather than hanging on the left side, maintained my axis tilt, which is this line here. Tiger's going to draw a line on his spine. Angles are virtually the same. So no head movement, no sway, no slide. It's just learning how to shift correctly in the backswing that will make the difference between you having back pain or not having back pain. If you don't want to have back pain in your swing, you must allow yourself to shift naturally, just like I've demonstrated here. And the difference is incredibly subtle. It doesn't look like I've done anything crazy here. And I'm going to show you in just a moment how the rest of the swing that Rotary Swing teaches is virtually identical to what Tiger's doing. Let's step through a couple frames and take a look. So we're going to go down the next frame. So again, this is me just demonstrating this in the webinar, but of course my swing is, I, I can't do anything different than what I'm demonstrating. It's all the same stuff. So. Now you're going to notice because Tiger was hung more on that left side, and we'll use that vertical line there just to, again, he's a little bit further, closer into neutral joint alignment than I am because I made a little bit of shift to the right, which means I got to make a little bit of shift to the left. You can see that there's a little gap between my belt. He's a little bit in front of it with the belt. Otherwise, the moves are virtually identical. And then we'll go forward just a little bit more. Halfway down. Hey, look at that virtually identical. And then as we go forward into the post-up move, hey, look at that. This is all exactly the same as some of the best ball strikers in the world. They all move the same way from the inside out. Now you can find variations in arm plane and you know shaft plane and club face angle and things like that. But the body, the body is what generates the power. The body is what allows me to hit 300 yard drives and 200 yard seven irons. And it's going to be what allows you to do the same thing. You're going to learn how to move exactly like this when you are a member of Rotary Swing. You only have to learn four critical moves. But first, let's get rid of this back pain. Let's, I'm going to want you to uh, take a look at this bonus video. I'm going to post up in the description down below if you're watching this on YouTube where you're going to see a little I card up in the corner. And it's going to take you to a bonus video that's going to show you how to properly shift your weight just like Tiger Woods or any other pro on the planet. Although Tiger's not shifting correctly. So if you don't want uh, back pain, you need to shift like Tiger used to. But uh, in this video, it's going to talk about this right hip line and how critical it is to get your weight over there so you can make a full turn and take all of the strain off your lumbar. If you don't want back pain, do you trust your swing to anybody else? You have to look at it from a biomechanical perspective, the way that rotary swing does. And Tiger can avoid this back pain and you can avoid the same fate as Tiger.